All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm Vince Duvall with Eagle Hubs, and we're here with this week's Eagle Nest podcast. And I'm Brad Brewer with all that stuff he said like normal. Man, you should say it today. You should. I'm with Eagle Homes, powered by EXP Realty, and this is the Eagle Homes podcast. Brett, it's Monday, by it's, the way. It's, yeah, happy Monday, man. What, what a weekend. How was your weekend? You know, my weekend was was nice. Nice. Um, let's see, my wife and I had a wine tasting at Buzz Wine Bar in Burlington, Wisconsin. Pretty new. Like, actually, I think they've been around, but they're in their... They were they're in a location right across the street on Pine Street. They're, I think they're right next door to Fred's. Yeah, they're right yep. next door to Fred's. Yep. Uh, real cool little place. Um, they've got wine, bourbon, I think tequila. Sorry, Melissa and Mark, if I got that wrong, they're the owners. Um, but uh, nice wine tasting. I think we ordered a few uh, a few things because uh, my wife likes the wine, of course, and we can never run out. Yeah. Like this, and I'd be in trouble. So we did that on Saturday, and her uh, mother mother came into town. So my mother in law, we had dinner early dinner with them, like uh, four o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. So so of course I was starving by eight o'clock, and that's after the time of day at which I like to eat because I'm trying to get get fit and slim. We should do an update on that today on our our health journey at some point. But anyway. yeah. So did that, and then yesterday. Um, Honestly, just worked a little bit during the uh, afternoon, evening, the morning. I got up and had to go over to a rental property, and uh, that was a fun one. <laughs> so well, we can't expect everybody to know what a, a breaker box is or how so, to see a breaker. Yeah, so that was fun. I, I mean, I'm not 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 a big deal. And I will just, we're not going to disclose the tenant. He probably didn't even watch anyway. So, uh, <laughs> so tenant called uh, or texted me on. Was it Friday? I think it was Friday. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Thursday, Friday. Because air conditioner wasn't working, so I said, you know, I, you know, before I call an electrician out or, or HVAC, uh, I'm gonna like, well, let's check the basics, right? So I texted him back and I said, uh, you know, hey, can you check to see if the circuit's off? And he's like, what's that? And I'm like, oh shoot, how do I explain? So I said, well, it's a it's a metal box panel in the basement, and you open it up, there will be some switches inside. I figured that was a pretty good explanation. I get a text about five minutes later. He took a, per a picture of the furnace with the filter slightly pulled out and said, is this it? And I said, nice try, no. I tell you what, I said, I'll just come over here in the next couple days and um, see if I can check that first before I call the HVAC guy. Knowing that I just felt like yeah. Because I know if there's stuff serviced or whatever, and maybe, and I know that that furnace was serviced over the winter time. I just had this feeling the circuit breaker was off. Right, right. Or maybe there's, I think sometimes there's a switch on the unit outside. I just had a feeling one of those two were off. Yep. So, yeah, I went over there uh, yesterday morning. Sure enough, went down to the basement, popped the panel open, and everything's facing the middle, which is on, except for which the two breakers that. Of course, control the air conditioner. <laughs> Flipped it on, went upstairs, turned the AC on. Even it, even the chilly day it was, it was cranking out some cool air. Nice. So, so yeah, save some money. Uh, save some money on that one. Anyway, but yeah. Uh, so uh, we had the Wheatland PTO spaghetti dinner on uh, Saturday night. It was actually a really good turnout. Our basket. So we donated a basket with some other local um, vendors and businesses here. We did uh, eat local, shop local, play local basket that um, ended up getting, I think, $175 for the basket. So whoever got it got a killer deal on it because there's probably about $300 worth of value between gift certificates and vouchers and different things in there. So, uh, and we ended up winning, it, uh, we won a, uh, we were the highest bidder on a fire truck ride to school for the kids. Well, that's so, cool. so the kids will get picked up in a fire truck sometime between now and the end of the year. Just them, or do they get I, to my friends? I, it, just says, it just says them. Okay. But I think, you know, we have a few neighborhood kids. Kind of like the neighborhood kids. If we, can get, if we can get four or five kids in there, I think that'd be pretty cool. If they all come to the house and they jump in the fire truck, get a ride over, I, I think that'd be pretty neat. So got to figure out how to do that because there's about six or seven that get on the bus down the street. There's, you know... Three or four that get on just in our block, uh, so we'll have to figure out how we're going to. Uh, At least I gotta get the block. 
That's kind of what I'm thinking. It just yeah. depends how much room is in this fire truck, right? Sure. Like to safely transport kids to school. Right. Right. Um, and, and what's cool about that, uh, for those that don't know, my cousin uh, Joey is actually a Wheatland fire a volunteer firefighter. So gotcha. hopefully he'll get to be on the truck with them because the girls love it when they get to see him in his fire gear. So hopefully that'll be the case. We'll see what happens. So and speaking of that basket, um, we had some really cool businesses that you know we bought some things to put in the basket but also donated. matched or donated so i don't yeah. know if you remember uh, who all donated uh, here at loop commons donated a, a climbing wall uh, i think a bypass for a climbing wall okay we also had west ocean sports complex donated either free bang cage or an hour on the golf simulator along with we uh, purchased a gift certificate to go with that so you can get a couple hours on either one of those uh, cravings. We we purchased a gift card from there. Uh, Burlington Spoken Tap House. They actually donated. We we got a gift certificate, and they donated some alcohol along with some Bloody Mary mix and sausages. For, uh, like build your own Bloody Mary, and then uh, a cup of Joe's in Burlington and uh, Twin Lakes. We donate. We got the gift certificate, and then they donated an hour on their. Uh, Friends couch, so that was pretty cool. Oh, that's um, awesome. I feel like I'm missing. Oh, uh, Anti Cray Cray's Cookie Creation donated a box of cookies that were decorated like uh, plates of spaghetti. It was really, really neat. Um, so, yeah, I think that was. My talented wife, ladies and gentlemen. It was, yeah. I, I, gosh, I feel like I'm still missing I something. I got my daughter to do some IT services or something. Oh, that. Like a wizard of that stuff. Yeah, that would have been, been clever. I don't know what she would have. Donated. I don't have to ask her about that because we could always get her to do next one. We could. Yeah. She, oh. she likes that stuff. So. So okay. yeah. So and then I had a, a busy weekend on show of uh, showings on a Saturday. So hopefully uh, something comes from that. Uh, submitted an offer. So we'll we'll see what happens. Very um, cool. Yeah. Very cool. So a little work, a little pleasure. Yeah. A little work, a little play. Family time. Yeah. No golf. No golf. Neither one of us. We golf Friday. Let's be real. We golf Friday during the day. That's a good point. Yeah. We did. Um, but, you know, over the weekend, one of the things came out, and I reached out to um, our lender, Kevin, who was on here. Kevin was on eh, a month ago, month, six weeks ago or something like that. And FHA, they brought, it, they brought it up probably about a year ago that FHA was going to do a 40-year mortgage. Okay. Remember that. And it, it's going to get approved, or it went through all the channels and is approved to go live May 8th, okay? But, you know, this is where news media really screws things up. <laughs> news media, social media, everything like that. It said, you know, a couple of articles I read, new 40-year mortgage could save you thousands, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. But the articles didn't give you, give you all the details on how that works. You actually have to be in an FHA loan, so to kind of... Give a little backstory on that. You actually have to be an FHA loan currently. You have to you have to have defaulted okay. on your loan, and then you can apply for this forty year this forty year. It's basically equivalent to knocking one percent. You know, okay. if you're on a seven percent, it's kind of your payments now will look like a six percent interest rate. Um, okay. So it's a great. So we can expand on this a little bit, but. So it's a great loan for those that have gotten into some financial, you know, short-term financial difficulties yep. to help them recover. So it is not good if you don't go out, if you already have FHA, don't go default on your loan thinking this is great because that will hurt your credit. It does. And so it is very clearly, so it's a product that is to help people, which I think is great. Yeah. But it's not what the media sounds like. The media pitched it to be. No, no, they they pitched it a hundred percent to be like this new program to help home buyers today get into a house that is, you know, maybe a little more affordable for them, uh, kind of to offset the inflating prices of homes and and things like that. So it was definitely definitely very misleading, and that's why I, I reached out to Kevin right away. I was like, "What is this?" You know. Help me, I kind of get a mis mixed signals on everything here. What are we looking at? What is it something you offer and go from there? So, so let's just on the premise of what it's, what's out there in the media. What are your thoughts of start making big mortgage companies offering a 40 year product? You know what? I, uh, we should get Kevin on to have this conversation yeah, at some point. I, I, 
I think it, with every, with the rising rate or rising home prices right now, it is really hard for a first time home buyer to purchase a starter home and have a reasonable mortgage. Okay, you know if you are making sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year, five ten years ago you could have easily bought a starter home. Today, not so much. It's it's not realistic. You know, two hundred thousand is really and you're in the two hundreds. Yeah, or many. There are some areas, of course, but the one that's in reasonable condition, you're you're looking at, you know, you can find some areas with maybe 150 still. Yep. But really, I mean, a lot of areas, it's 200,000, you know, the starter home. Right. So, yeah, that's, that can be tough. I mean, shoot, I mean, this is back in, again, this is back in 2001 when I bought my first house, starter home, little Cape Cod in West Dallas, 103,000. Yeah. Crazy. I know. It, it is nuts what, you know, with the difference between, I mean, that was 20 years ago. I mean, that, right. the the price of a gallon of milk has gone up substantially too yeah. since then. But And that house is probably, you know, and obviously that, at that point I went through the big real estate recession market crash and then it gets recovered. So I'd have to look it up, but I would, I would I'd bet you that house is probably a $200,000 house today. So... You know, kind of talking about first-time home buyers and, and things like that. I read a great article the other day, and it, it kind of piqued my interest. And it talks about how to help your kids um, with buying their first home. Mm-hmm. And and what they talk about is buying a starter home today, turning it into a rental, buying it in a neighborhood that you know maybe your kids want to live in, whatever. Turn it into a rental, rent it out for 10, 15 years until your kids are out of high school, out of college, you know, they, they know what they're doing and then, or what they want to do with their lives and then gift it to them, okay? okay. Or, or then sell it and use the, per- use the funds to purchase something else or, you know, help them with a down payment, whatever it might be. Uh, and I was like, man, that is really clever the way houses are appreciating year over year. You know, we talk about it all the time. The home, the price of a home goes up what three to five percent every year, give give or take one to five. Normal appreciations, yeah, one to probably one to three, one to five. So yeah, that range, so, so depending on yeah. the, the area and how much it's growing and things like that, um, we'll say one to five percent. You know, so if you if you bought a house when your kid is six years old, rented it out, uh, bought a small starter home that you can you know the rent's going to cover the mortgage plus a little bit. And rent it out for 10, 15 years and then sell it, you're gonna have A, that appreciation, um, plus you've been paying down on that mortgage that time, and, and now you have a great chunk of equity to either pass off to your kids, and then, you know, if you don't, if your kids disown you or whatever, hell, that's right. that's more money in your pocket, right? Exactly, and so that's, that's definitely one way to go to help your kids get started. <laughs> I'm gonna go a different direction. Okay. From what we're talking, so we're kind of moving into a financial direction today. A um, little background story, and I'll give my kid credit; she still does this today. Uh, pretty, pretty close to it anyway. Uh, previous career, I one of the trainers that I worked with. She had told me a story that her dad, from the time she started working when she was still a teenager, just even summer jobs, made her put away fifty percent of her income, and told her to do that throughout her life. If you just get accustomed to living on that right. that much of your income, it will be easy no matter how much you make. So she did that. Oh, that's a cool idea. So when Stacia started working, my daughter, <laughs> I pitched this the first time. I said, you know, hey, you should go open up an IRA. This is when she was 14. Which, I, mean, I don't know how many IRA, you know, 14 years have a Roth IRA and a, and a mutual fund, but she did. Yeah. Her and my wife both just argue no that's ridiculous no way don't make her do that I'm like she's making the expenses 14 year olds she's living with us not like we're charging her rent at 14 or anything like that <laughs> well sure enough we go to the we go to the investor's office and and she at this time is probably making about 700 dollars a month which is pretty good yeah maybe 500 even she goes uh she ended up putting a total away of 350 which is essentially it was actually a little more than half i think and i'm gonna sit there going so she does listen to this day, and she'll, she's pacing now, and she's 21 now. Um, you know, obviously, great job, software developer, but she'll she'll probably be she'll be a millionaire sometime in her 30s. Yeah, it's just that, and she's already bought it. She, and she was able to buy a home by the way, no parents' assistance. She was working full time. 
bought her first house at the age of 18. I mean, how, many, okay, how, yeah. many, how many kids buy their first house at eight, 18? Right. So she'd already taken her college courses for software development, web development, all the different things she's done. I think she's mostly software development. But that that's that's some planning. And I'll only take credit because she's the one that had to stick with it. Never pressured her. Right. But I'll only take credit for giving her the idea of like, hey, start 50%. If you can stay it. And she is like that now. She's, I, I bet she probably lives on about 50% of her income. Yeah. Well, and right. I, I know even when I was working, you know, a nine to five healthcare job, mm -hmm. it was it, every time I got a raise, that raise didn't, it, it did nothing. I, I didn't put extra money in my pocket. It, I just increased my 401k, how much money went in my 401k. Yep. So if it was a 3% raise, 3% 3% extra went into the 401k. You know, it's you start living on those means, and you know a lot of people once they get a raise, they increase their spend. They're like, oh, now I can go buy a new car. Well, it's common. The it, more you make, the more you spend, and yeah, you, you do right. And she has too, but she, she's if you stick with that fifty percent, and maybe it's not fifty percent. If believe me, probably the majority of us, if you're saving, if you're the seventy thirty, you're right. probably doing a great job. Right. So maybe it's not, you know, because 50 50, depending on what you make, right, may not be realistic. Right. And depending on what your expenses are, you know, where you're at in life, right. Like, but if you get used to something at that level when you're young, then you just, you're still putting, like you said, you get that raise. Well, maybe the extra does go in your 401k and then something goes here. Right. And you do spend more. Yep. Because you are making more. There's nothing wrong with it. You're just spending 50%. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's, you know, I, I give you a great example is one of uh, one of the mentors that I listen to within our EXP organization uh, posted a Facebook post. And this is where I came up with this idea. And you'll know what I'm talking about when I get there. But he posted a Facebook, Facebook post that his team on January 1st started a push-up challenge. And what it was, was do as many push-ups as you can do on day one. So, if, and it was everybody in his office. He has a team of about, I think, 20 employees um, in his office. And they would do, you know, if you can only do five push-ups, that's what, that's what you, you as an individual are doing today, right? Right. And then every day, they added one push-up to the challenge. So, Brad and I and another buddy, Tommy, is doing this push-up. We started at 20 on day one, I think. Yeah, I didn't get a choice to start less than 20. That's that's crap. Yeah, no, I, I figured you've been doing burn boot camp for the last three months. That's crap. Push-ups are hard. I, I'm still heavy. <laughs> so we, we've been doing this, but it, I call it where, I'm, where I'm going with this is I decided to ask my wife if she wanted to do it with me. So we do. We started on April 4th, right? I think it was, whatever that Monday was, April 3rd. Uh, 20 push-ups and 20 sit-ups, adding one a day. So I think today's 33 or 34. I haven't done mine today yet. I, I think, think it's 34. I think it is 34. It's not overachieved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good for you. The guy, <laughs> the guy that's complaining about push-ups today. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's kind of cool because now my wife are, is doing it with me, but so are my two kids. So my now they're not doing 20. They're just doing as many as they can, but it's kind of cool to see a 7-year-old and a 4-year-old knock it out like five push-ups. And then five sit-ups, uh, or whatever that number is. They just do it until they're tired. But at least they understand the concept of a push-up and doing some type of physical activity. Uh, so yeah, so it's pretty cool. So that's where I came up with the idea, and it's just it's changing what you're doing on a daily basis, one step at a yeah. time, right? So if it's so one, get one percent better every day. Yeah. So if you're that's putting, it. Yeah, so if you're putting, you know, if you you start putting twenty percent away. One year, see if you can change it to twenty five percent. Right, take that extra step, um, set yourself up for fi financial success. And, and you know, I think one of the things a lot of people don't do when we're looking at financials and talking about you know saving for a house, and that's kind of how we're tying this all in. If you're trying to save for a house, and you know, look at your financials, write down everything you spend on, look at your credit card statement, your bank statement, and go, oh, why did I spend three dollars and nineteen cents at the gas station? You're like, oh. I, I wanted that Powerade or, oh, I wanted that Red Bull. Uh, you know, change those habits, you know, carry water with you. You know, Brad, I don't see Brad's water today. It's probably... It's on the floor. Uh, it's on the floor. I'm still drinking my delicious Loop Commons coffee. <laughs> um, so, you know... It's not pay us to plug that. <laughs> it is really good, though. Change, change, your, change your habits one step at a time um, and stick to it. So set, set goals... And stick to those habits one step, one day at a time, mm -hmm. until you're until it becomes 
a habit. It takes so they say it takes twenty one days to create a habit. And that's that's exactly right. And the more you just get accustomed to something, the easier it is. You know, we we'll kind of started our little health checkups here. Yep. So so we started this whole burn health and wellness. I call, I call it a health and wellness. I don't know if you actually call it that or not. This whole like just get healthy first, take care of yourself, take your body, and then other things follow. And the only thing it's gone really well. My energy's way up from what it was in January. I I am slimmer. The weird thing is, is I must be converting fat to muscle because yeah. I've been stuck at like ten pounds lost for like I feel like thirty days now. No, me too. I'm and, in that same boat. And I know it's probably. I think it was a wave because I lost like six real quick, and I wasn't losing. All of a sudden, four pounds dropped in one week. Ironically, it was the week I took off because my foot was hurting me, which was really funny. Yeah. So at least I didn't eat like a, a jag that week. But uh, now I'm in that phase again, so I have a feeling it's going to hit again, I hope, you know, because I'm, I'm still eating good. You know, I really didn't change my diet since January. Um, I've got one cheat day a week now, but I'm not, I'm not going crazy with that. Right. You know, I did have an ice cream sandwich yesterday. <laughs> Um, haven't had one of those in a while. Right. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, but, and that, that's challenge with that cheat day is to make sure you don't overindulge. In fairness, it was the minimum. Oh, yeah, that's. It was a little one. I, mean, I bet you still wanted a wasn't second big, one. Wasn't that big one that Quick Trip sells that's got the, uh, like the cookie oh, on yeah. the side with yeah. the uh, M&M's or whatever. Chocolate chip thing. cookie here, oh. M&M cookie, yeah. Those are good. By the way, I'm hungry, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> what would you drink? It's spinach. Kale and a little bit of fruit smoothie for your breakfast. Yeah, by and you've been up since four. By nine twenty two, and, and you're going to burn. Yeah, by nine twenty two, you're hungry. Yeah, so yeah. Anyway. Uh, uh, but I'm going to avoid the uh, sweets. It was not my cheat day today, so back on it. Yeah, so you know, right? It's in that fitness challenge that we we started back in January. It yes, it was a little bit about losing weight, but it was also about you know doing something that we can maintain and, and create healthy habits. And I actually enjoy it. It is it's an ass kicking on a daily basis. Um, Today was athletic conditioning. Yeah, athletic conditioning. I will say that I always rate them. <laughs> People are like, how is it? I'm like, well, every workout ranges from hard to brutal. Today was close to brutal. It wasn't brutal. There's yeah. definitely been some harder ones. Right. But it was on the it was on the more difficult side. And just because of the conditioning, it's constant. Right. For forty five minutes, so you're you get out of breath. Yeah. Oh, I was, yeah, I was huffing and puffing at that, and then she's yeah. like, "All right, we're gonna do a finisher," and I'm like, oh, "I thought that was the finisher." I just uh, I'm I said out loud. <laughs> yeah, we went through the all our. All the, you went six two, stations, two, two Super. steps with three stations each, so six total stations, and we did it. And then she's like, "All right, we're gonna go back through them all for just forty seconds each station." I thought that was the finisher. So when we got done, she's like, "All right, now for the finisher." And the finisher is usually pretty brutal. I go out loud. I said, "I thought that was the finisher," <laughs> but yeah. actually, the finisher wasn't bad. No, so, it. it well, you weren't doing the high knees. I, I had to do the alternate uh, with my foot. Yeah. Um, Not yeah. the high knees, the... Uh, I was doing the... Jump, jump squat, or... I was knee, doing the jump part of the squat. I was just doing the squat walk. Yeah. So, and yeah. then the jumping jacks instead of the... Jump. Instead of, knee tucks. Instead of, instead of the knee tucks. I got to watch that foot still. It's still yeah. a little tender. Um, but yeah, so, you know, when it comes to financials in life, it's all about creating habits, right? Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's about... We kind of went from this whole FHA 40 year, you know, how it's, how it could help people, but it's all about creating those habits to, you know, save money, put yourself, set yourself up for success. You know, I had a buyer this weekend that we actually talked a little bit about house hacking. Uh, he's a first time home buyer and he's actually going to have his cousin live with him for, you know, however long it is. I mean, he's qualified for X amount of dollars and he's not going to use his cousin's income to help offset or not his income, but the rent that he's going to charge him to offset his mortgage um, from a financial standpoint or a pre-approval standpoint, what he's going to do is just take that money and use it on a monthly basis to improve his home, uh, which is, I, I think, a great way to also start growing that equity. And he's looking at homes that need a little bit of elbow grease. He's like, I'm not afraid to uh, jump in and, and 
paint or rip up flooring and put in new flooring or you know maybe change light fixtures things like that he, he's very handy he's actually a firefighter out in whitewater uh he's one of one of the guys that's in my homes for heroes program so i i applaud him for understanding that's an opportunity mm -hmm. to create equity and, and wealth for himself so he's on the right track it's just a matter of you know finding the right uniform the right right location yeah, so so bring this to bring this kind of full back circle to that initial comment about the forty year FHA. Obviously, the way it's set up again, it's it's for those that are in trouble. I would be opposed because you're right. I think I think it would be nice if they did have a product out there as maybe a forty year on certain packages. But I would definitely, and I think it's a loan officer's job. Maybe even us. We don't really do financial advising, but we do talk finance with our clients because it's a you know, your home is typically one of, if not one of your most, your bit largest investments, that there is a time potentially for that 40-year mortgage. I mean, I guess you'd look at it, what's 10 more years? Right. Well, and, and no one ever hits there anyway, because they usually, either you, one, if you actually do stay that long, you usually pay it off sooner. Right. Or two, you, just, you sell it, use your equity, and you go buy something else. Right. And have sell, it, sell it, refinance, whatever it might be. But I think from a... A purchasing standpoint, it gives buyers an opportunity to get into something uh, and start a creating that equity instead of renting, and then they're also it, it's a huge impact on their credit score. So it's going to start building their credit to where maybe they're you know in five or ten years they're not in an FHA anymore. They can refinance down to a thirty when maybe rates are a little bit better or whatever. Uh, I think it's just a great opportunity. So I'm going to put a call to action out there. I would actually like to hear from those that. May or may, maybe not be watching live, but that watch this video. Give us your input. If there was a 40-year mortgage available, what questions do you have about it? And two, would it be something you think would help be helpful for you, at least for the purchase of your first home? Yep. And I would even I would say for like your first time home buyers is who I would maybe even limit it to. Right. So obviously, and by the way, I'll preface this also by saying. We're just real estate agents. We have no control over what loan programs are ever designed or created. And they would never ask us anyway. <laughs> I like that little plug. <laughs> it's, it's like my goal this thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I don't know. I think I think it's something that could be looked at, and I'm probably limited to the first time home buyer. Yeah. Personally. Yep. Let them let them get that equity bill. Well, and, and remind you, a first time home buyer is somebody that hasn't owned a home for what is it? Uh, five years? <sighs> Three years? It's five years. Now. Okay. They, they've changed that. Yeah. So it's, don't quote us on that. Ask your lender. But, I mean, just because you owned a home five, ten years ago and you don't own one anymore for the last five years. I think it used to be eight. No, okay. Eight. I don't think it is either. Um, so you, you still can be a first time home buyer even if you owned something years ago. So yeah. keep that in mind. Even though you may not, in the back of your head, think you're a first time home buyer, you, you may qualify for that too. So. Exactly. All right, guys. It's. Uh, about 9.30, we're checking out here. I'm Vince Duvall with Eagle Homes, and this is the Eagle's Nest Podcast. And I'm Brad Brewer. I'm also with Eagle Homes, powered by EXP Realty, coming to you again from the Lou Commons this week. We'll see you next week with another great topic, probably something a little bit, a little teaser. We're going to go community-related this week. So if you guys know anything that's going on in the uh, you know Burlington area, that's a lot of different communities, let us know. We'd love to highlight it. Or if you've got, if you've got a business out there and you've got specials coming up, we love to support our local businesses, so feel free to send us a message. Even, by the way, I'll just throw this out there, love to have you on the show Yep. and interview you and let you talk about your business. Sounds good. Hey, have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.